Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Saturday the 22nd of August 2020 and we're publishing our Gold and Silver Weekly Update for the week ending the 21st of August. Gold fell $4 last week from $1,945 to $1,941, having hit a high of 2015 and a low of 1912 a fall of just 0.2%. In sterling terms, gold finished the week at £1,482, that's down £3, and in euros it closed at €1,645, that's up €3. Euros. Silver rose 34 cents, from $26.46 to $26.80, having hit a high of 28.48 and a low of 25.89, a rise of 1.3%. In sterling terms, it closed at £20.47, that's up 25 pence, or 1.3%, same as the dollar rise, and in euros it closed at 22.71 euros, that's up 0.37 euros. The gold to silver ratio fell from 73.5 to 1 to 73.3 to 1. For those interested, Bitcoin is down $289 on the week at $11,575. Now the Dow Jones closed on Friday at 27,903, up 190 points on the day, but 28 points down on the week. The S&P 500 closed at 3,397, up 11 points on the day and up 25 points on the week. And the Nasdaq? closed at 11,311, up 46 points on the day, and up 292 points on the week. And we all know that to a large extent, this is primarily driven by a number of the major tech stocks, with Apple for the first time reaching a market valuation in excess of $2 trillion. Now, Brent crude closed at $44.35, down just 45 cents on the week. And WTI crude closed at $42.34, and that's up 33 cents on the week. So for the past few weeks, crude prices have generally remained pretty stable and seems to be moderately comfortable at or around this $40 level. Now, the dollar index stands at 93.24, and that is up 0.15 points on the week. Now, our conclusion from last week's video podcast was, quote, So this coming week, providing there's no political turmoil other than the usual soundings, one can perhaps expect a degree of consolidation of precious metal prices. And of course, we should be looking out for any agreed stimulus packages that Congress and the President presents. Our view is that if gold and silver do fall back, then they present a great buying opportunity as they dip providing you heed our normal caution to take a medium-term view when buying. Unquote. Well, by the end of the week, we've proven to be correct. We have seen slight consolidation or little movement. But we did, admittedly, see a sharp rise in gold on Monday and Tuesday and the early parts of Wednesday, holding ground only then to fall back late on Wednesday not really recovering during the course of the remainder of the week. Silver did similarly, though it did prove a little more chaotic in terms of vacillation, and did attempt a few rallies, but fell back again on Friday. Now, last week's housing starts were positive, and so were the manufacturing and services flash PMIs for August. However, the jobless claims did exceed 1.1 million again, this is the weekly figure, compared with the previous week's 971,000, which, frankly, was very disappointing to the market. Certainly, the very small fall in gold was really represented by the rise in the US dollar. Now, from a technical point of view, target support is seen near the 50-day moving average at $1,863, and there is some slight but not overwhelming resistance at 1955 
Now, a number of traders have mused that they would like to see gold fall back to $1,800, at which point they would buy back in again. And frankly, if that were to happen, we would probably do that too. Now, again, we see $2,000 as currently being a strong resistance point. More psychological, admittedly, than technical. But it does seem to be the case that at the moment, so far, gold can go beyond 2000 but not hold its own for very long. Now, both short and medium term momentum are negative, which suggests, at least from a technical point of view, a further fall in prices. Not necessarily large, but a fall nevertheless. Now, technically, silver has formed what the experts term a neutral candlestick, which suggests consolidation and possibly slightly lower prices. There's certainly strong support at $25 and very strong support at $24. Now, should these be breached, downwards that is, then our $23 recommendation kicks in, which is less technical than what our figures are suggesting. But we see 23 as being that sort of golden point. But if that were breached downwards, then there could be a rapid fall to $20. But we are, and frankly, are not expecting that for now. Now, we have cautioned, though, that although a number of experts have warned about the US dollar potentially falling below the 90 index, others have argued that against other currencies, the dollar may get a respite as the likes of the euro and sterling have performed well against it in recent times and may give back some of their gains. Of course, should this happen, then precious metal prices, certainly under that factor, will go lower. Other factors may prevent it, but without doubt the dollar value does have a significant impact. Now, of course, that said, there are a number of tailwinds for precious metals, including more stimulus yet to be announced, a high stock market, which at some stage must correct, negative rates on the horizon, and the potential for inflation in time. Now, we have little doubt that taking up to a three-year view, gold and silver are still a strong purchase currently. But for those looking for shorter time horizons, then you may have to allow for a few more pullbacks first, especially those buying physical, bearing in mind that premiums are still quite high in many cases. Now, of course, those who bought via a company called Bullion Vault or similarly between $12.50 and $13 back in March of this year, as we suggested that you should, and it's very rare we give buy recommendations, as you appreciate, you'll have doubled your money by now, assuming you sold. And those buying the physical at the time, paying 10 to $15 premiums in some cases, will just now be sitting on a very small profit. So it really does depend on one's time horizon and how one acquires precious metals or access to precious metal prices. So let's now take a look at the economic data that could influence prices next week. On Monday, the Chicago Fed National Activity Index for July will be announced. On Tuesday, Consumer Confidence Index for August and New Home Sales for July. Wednesday, Durable Goods Orders for July and Core Capital Goods Orders for July. Thursday, GDP Revision for Quarter 2 pending home sales index for July and, of course, as always, the weekly jobless claims figures. And then on Friday, quite a, a, a significant amount of info, personal income, consumer spending, core inflation and advanced trading goods all for July. And then we have the Chicago PMI for August and the Consumer Sentiment Index for August. So, most of our attention will be directed to Thursday and, of course, naturally on Friday. Though we won't ignore the rest of the week. Now, we've been asked by a number of subscribers our thoughts on the equity markets, with them being so high yet again. And all that we can really do at this point is reiterate that as long as the stimulus keeps coming, equities are likely to perform well. 
when that stimulus eventually stops, and we believe ultimately it will, we suspect we shall see quite a significant reversal. Not necessarily a crash, but a multiple thousand points decline of the Dow, and even the Nasdaq will have its comeuppance too. Now, Bloomberg published an interesting article on this subject yesterday, and we'll share a brief excerpt for you. I'll quote it without showing it on the screen. Quote, Skeptics are a dying breed in American equities. It's another illustration of how risky it has become to doubt the resilience of the market's $13 trillion surge since late March. Going by the short positions of hedge funds, resistance to rising prices is the lowest in 16 years. Bears pulled out as buying surged among professional investors who were forced back into stocks despite a recession, stagnating profits and the prospect of a messy presidential election. While perhaps logical, given open-ended Federal Reserve support, rampant covering depletes at least one source of support for shares, buying by speculators who sold them short. Virtually every constituency in the market has gotten more bullish as the S&P 500 surged 52% in five months. In the past 21 sessions, there hasn't been a drop of 1%, the longest stretch since January. The repurchase of those short shares has been a factor which has contributed to the rally that we've enjoyed since, said Lawrence Creatura, a portfolio manager at PRS PCTV Capital LLC. It will certainly be a weaker force going forward because mathematically it's just a simply a smaller quantity of outstanding shares that are still short. The S&P 500 added 0.7% over five days, notching its fourth straight weekly gain. It exceeded the February 19th record high on Tuesday to cap the fastest bear market recovery in history. The Russell 2000 index of smaller companies fell 1.6%, while the Dow Jones Industrial Average was virtually flat. The Nasdaq 100 performed better, climbing 3.5%. Steamrolled by a rally, whose velocity is the strongest in decades, bears are giving up. At the start of August, the median S&P 500 stock had outstanding short interest, equating to just 1.8% of market capitalization, the lowest level since at least 2004. Data compiled by Goldman Sachs Group Inc. shows. All major sectors except energy saw bearish bets sitting in the bottom decile over the last 15 years. Unquote. Interesting, is it not, to look at this sort of information. And whilst most of us will believe that eventually these markets will reverse. At the end of the day, psychology plays an important part and there is a large degree of herd instinct amongst traders. So this coming week, frankly, we're repeating really what we stated last week, as we believe that to a greater or lesser extent, the same still holds, with the prospect of further consolidation, slightly downward movement, providing there is no political turmoil other than the usual soundings. And therefore, we are really expecting gold and silver to stay close to current levels or falling back marginally. Our view is that if they do fall back and we're wrong and they fall back more severely than what we've indicated and that some of the technical low points come in, then... We're the first to say they present a great buying opportunity, again taking the medium-term view in mind. Now, before we go, we know that a number of you were disappointed that when silver hit $30, a number were expecting an imminent rise to 50 and then $100 by Christmas, and gold was going to $3,000 any day soon. We tried to temper that enthusiasm. 
because we did not see or share that view. We could see it moving slightly higher than, than it actually did, but we really could not see these two being met so quickly. Now that's not to say by the end of the year they won't, but the one advantage we do have, and this is why we hope people find it useful listening to us, is that even though it had those prices risen so dramatically, for us personally, it would have been wonderful because our existing holdings of gold and silver would have provided us with a very healthy profit indeed. But we have to say we've been involved in these markets, or certainly I have, for almost 40 years. And my experience and the calculations that we've put together to assess these markets have shown, and this is not earth shattering, that these things do not move up in one huge move without us witnessing a number of pullbacks and degrees of consolidation. And often the best bull markets actually take years to materialize, certainly as far as gold and silver are concerned, although we've seen that in equity markets too. And generally, it's only when the public, plain old Joe, as some call the general public, I don't know if that's a good positive term, but plain old Joe, we should say for the moment, who knows nothing about the markets, who's persuaded to invest through peer pressure and everyone is telling him or her, you've got to put your money in now, it's a dead cert. This, unfortunately, traditionally, has then been the time the professionals start to sell. The problem, though, we have at the moment, which makes it more difficult to assess, is that the pandemic has been so virulent and then economic consequences so awful. Poor old Joe is simply just that. Poor. Not even knowing if he and his family will financially survive the next month or so, let alone start, inverted commas, squandering money or gambling money or investing money, depending which view you take, into precious metals or equities. So this market, is going to rise and fall by the activities of the professionals, large funds and wealthy private investors, and not the typical man in the street, as perhaps we've witnessed before. What do you think? Do share your thoughts. Thank you so much for listening, and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel and press the bell sign so that you're notified of our videos as and when they are published. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative and if so please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at illuminatisilver.com and if you haven't already done so please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.